Thank you. It's really great to be here. Um, when I saw that you were doing Lionheart again, you know, this year, I, I have got a confession to make. I asked the Lord if you would invite me. <laughs> and within three days, you invited me. Yeah, yeah. Because actually, desire can create reality. And I've learned the power of desire. Um, I once had a, a food with Bobby Connor, and I didn't know Bobby Connor at the time, but it was in January. I put in my journal, this year, I want to have a meal with Bobby Connor. By December that year, I was sitting at a table eating with Bobby Connor, you know? Because if you delight yourself in the Lord, he will give you the desires of your heart. We forget the delight bit. The delight bit means please yourself, enjoy yourself in the Lord. It means to feast on his goodness. Live in a perpetual state of enjoyment, delight. And then he gives you wonderful things, you know? Uh, you know, we just did a, a Beyond Human intensive in Cardiff, and it was a training school. And I knew, you know, th 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 not much income was going to come in. But I said, Lord, you know, you provide. So Rachel was just opening some tins in the house, and a thousand pounds popped out. <laughs> In 20 pound notes, a thousand pounds. And I'm like, yeah, Jesus believes in me. Come on. <laughs> I've had money materialize for flights. I've had money materialize in my hands, you know. I have a very simple relationship with the Lord. I believe that He loves me and I love Him. And He's good through and through. So I don't tolerate any thoughts that contradict His goodness. And through that lens of goodness, I see life and immortality. I see a, a world that's open with angels and saints. I see a new and living way into heaven that bypasses death. That death is not my hero. Jesus is my hero and he has opened up everything. All the promises have become yes and amen. And it's the way we think determines the world that we see. So repentance means to change the way you think. And what happens? You're transformed by the renewing of your mind. So the way you think is determining the world you live in. So the Lord's sending all of these prophets and people like Rick Joyner to write books like Final Quest. How many of you guys read Final Quest? <laughs> wow, that book was so good. I remember re I read it at like a Bible week somewhere. I was at a Bible week, Stonely Bible week or something. I remember being in my little tent with my wife, reading that book, getting blown away, thinking, wow, you can like go to heaven? You guys, you could go to heaven. So that's what I want to talk about tonight. I want to talk about going to heaven. But before I do that, I want to say that you are powerful to think. If you think differently to me on these things tonight, that is not an issue. Because the only true theology is Jesus Christ himself and as family, we should all be powerful to disagree. You know, there'd be less splits if we let people be powerful and have a difference of opinion. You know, actually, you know, good families know how to disagree well. I can disagree well with my wife. We've got a great relationship. It's not a problem to think differently. You know, because we are all... Like Rick Joyner says, we have all got issues of deception that need to be shifted. In essence, there are things that are true, like, you know, judgment. Judgment is true, but how many of you guys know there's a thing that's truer? Mercy. Right? So there are things that are true, and you could be anchored on a truth like judgment, and you're completely right. But there's a higher truth. Mercy. So what you find is people are anchored in different layers of truth. So what I want you to do is repent. Because repent means to go up to the high place to think and see differently. It means go to the high place again. That's why penthouse has got that word pent in it. It means re revisit the higher perspective. So how many of you guys know right now with all the fake news, all of the contradictions... We need to go a lot higher than we have to be prophetic in this generation. If Facebook is giving you your information, go up higher. 
if Fox News or CNN, <laughs> I love that, that bit where, you know, um, Donald Trump re recently called CNN fake news, didn't he, in a press conference. But there was another press conference after that, and he said, I was wrong about you being fake news. He said, you're really, really fake news. <laughs> <laughs> So we're living in times of a lot of fake news, and we need to return back to the ancient paths. It said to the prophets, return to the ancient paths in God, back in Him. See, in Him we live, in Him we move, in Him we have our being. And there was always in God's heart, there would be a generation of the order of Melchizedek. Now the Melchizedek order is heavenly, not earthly. It says, you will all be taught by the Lord. There's always been God's intention that there would be a company that go up into Zion, into heaven, and are taught together. I'll give you another example of that in Scripture. Paul said, you have lots of different opinions, but he said, but it is possible to be of one mind and one opinion. In other words, there's a higher wisdom you can go into in the spirit where we come into the unity of the faith and the knowledge of God. This may sound like I'm talking Chinese right now. How many of you guys feel I'm talking Chinese? Great. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to get there. Don't worry. We're going to get there. You know, because the reality is you're already there. You are seated in Christ in heavenly places. Now, I just want to propose a few things tonight. You cannot understand what's going on on the earth today if you don't ascend. You know, Isaiah even himself in the Old Testament saw this. He said this, lift up your eyes into the heavens, then look upon the earth beneath. We're meant to ascend because that's where reality happens. Faith is anchored in a superior reality. It's called the unseen. You see, the events that are going on right now with Brexit and Trump and all these other things cannot be understood unless you see the courts and government of God. I'll give you an example. Job. Job's life makes no sense unless you see the courtroom. It just looks like chaos. But somebody stood in that courtroom and wrote that book. I love the book of Job. As it goes on, he realizes it's a court case. I teach on this. And he says, is there an intercessor? Is there a man that will stand between me on, on my behalf in the heavens? And then as it goes on, he says this amazing line, I have made my case and I know I shall be vindicated. And then you see that the courtroom sits and it all changes. See, the, the, the whole issue of Job is Job should have been there at the start. Job should have been in the heavenlies. That went down well. <laughs> well, let's get into this, okay? Thank you, Father. So I pray for great grace on everybody here because you're going to need to pull on grace to understand where I'm going because I'm going in. Even what I've said right now is my entry-level teaching. This is part one of a series I do called Ecclesia Rising. We just did a six-month school in Bath where I went through this month after month. People from all the city came. The Ecclesia were, were the governmental judicial authority that shaped regions. And we are learning to shape weather patterns, economics, events in the press, who gets elected. All of those things can be influenced by you appearing before God in Zion. You are more powerful than you've ever imagined. And we've made the gospel so small. So I'm a minister of the gospel. I can boast in the gospel of what he has accomplished for us, that he has rent the veil. Wow. Isaiah saw this day and he said, in the last days, are we in the last days? He said this, God's mountain will be elevated above the mountains. How do you get into a mountain that's elevated? You have to ascend in the spirit. Okay? But he says this, 
It's in Isaiah chapter 2. He says this, in the last days, many will say, come, let us go up into the mountain of the Lord. He will teach us his ways. We will walk in his paths, ancient paths, where Enoch is, where Enoch walks in the mysteries. And it says, out of Zion will go the law to judge nations until there is no military on earth. It says there'll be no armies, which means there's a company of person that have to start legislating a different world. Whew. Wow. Wow. Isn't that incredible? I would rather be an amateur in that than a professional in what we've done. Powerlessness where we just watch world events and think, I don't know what's happening. That is not the gospel. The gospel is the incomparably great power in us and for us who believe that you're in him. He's in you. He has seated you in places, heavenly places. You're not meant to be sitting in one place. There are courtrooms for you to occupy. There are seats where you can function as a king. There's angelic realms for you to engage with. And it's, you've been given a thing in scripture called free access. Now, if you look up the word free access, it means this, that you have a right to be there. You have a space there and a position there. So what are you going to do about it? Wow. See, Jesus came to restore what was lost. And what was lost was this, that from the very beginning, we were meant to be multidimensional beings. Jacob's ladder. We were meant to be able to go through all of it, and inside you are gates and doors. Scripture says, lift up your head, O you gates. Gates, doors. So let me ask you a question. Is that true? So you have a technology in you called gates and doors. Where do those doors and gates go? Jacob's ladder, Jesus said, was this was the blueprint of a human being. Jesus came to mirror and reveal the authentic blueprint of our design. And he said, I am Jacob's ladder, which means as he is, so are you. Which means you are Jacob's ladder. Which means you have a technology to go into heaven. For if any man or woman be in Christ, he is a new creation. Not even Adam has what you ha you've got. How do I know that? It's because we're not from Adam. If you are born from Christ, you are born of a new lineage, Scripture says. It says the old Adamic race was co-crucified together with Christ and was buried. And when he was resurrected, it says he was the firstborn of a new race. So our blueprint now is not Adam. Our blueprint is now Christ. And Christ was multi-dimensional technology. It said that when they went to throw stones at him, he walked through them. When they tried to grab him in the temple, imagine I'm Jesus in the temple and you guys get really angry at me. And you try and grab me. I can't just hide. It says he hid himself. <laughs> dimensional shifts. You have dimensional shifts technology. This is the stuff that's opening up now. This is the st kind of stuff I, I'm experiencing. I'll give you an example. The other day, I was thinking of a church in Seattle that I really love. And I love the past and I love the people there. And I was at my computer and I knew they were meeting without trying. It was an accident. I suddenly appeared <laughs> on the stage for a split second. And I was back at my computer and I was like... Wow, what just happened? And I was just thinking, that was awesome. I just felt them. I felt like I was there. I get a text message, like five minutes later from the senior pastor. My mum said, dude, did you just show up at the church? <laughs> My mum just saw you. He said, My mum's never had a see around thing in her life. She just saw you standing on the stage. And I was like, oh, man, I am so sorry. I said, it was an accident. I was just thinking... <laughs> I was just thinking about how much I love you guys, and I was there. 
These kind of things are opening up now. Crazy things. We're in crazy days. You know, Bob Jones was a prototype of a generation that would walk with him because all Bob Jones was was a friend of God's. See, Enoch walked with God and God took him and he shifted dimensions. Do you know Enoch is so active right now? I have learned so much from Enoch. Many of my podcast teachings have come from engaging Enoch and the things that he's taught me. I learned them in the above. Who's a prototype for learning from above? Jesus. He said, the words that I speak to you, I learned with with my father. Where's his father? In heaven. Do you know Jesus used to check out all the time and go in the spirit? I'll give you an example. You know when Jesus was asleep in the boat in the storm? Do you know why he wasn't waking up? Because he checked out. How do I know this? I was taught this by the Holy Spirit. So I decided to look it up after the Holy Spirit told me that he was in an ecstasy. Jesus was in a trance, in an ecstasy. He took me to Luke. I looked up the word for sleep in there in Luke. It's the only time it's used in the whole, bo- in the whole Bible. It's used once. And the word means this, hypnotized out of yourself. It's in my book. Jesus was actually thinking, I'm going to check out of hanging out with these guys for a minute. Boom. <laughs> And that's what saints used to do throughout history. They called it an ecstasy or a rapture because you couldn't bring them round. You couldn't wake them up because they were caught up in the heavens and the Lord had to release them. In fact, ecstasies were so common in church history that in monasteries, they had a person whose role was called the recall. Now, the recall was the person that was not allowed to get whacked. So let's just imagine this is a monastery. You would all start contemplating his goodness expanding. You're all gone. I'm there. I've got to keep an eye on the clock. It's 15 minutes before they had to come out. They'd give them 15 minutes to come back out of the spirit realm. They'd ring a bell. They were called the recall. This is the amazing thing. God was the one that listened to the bell. And God would release them. We, we should be familiar with this. See, something's come along and taken our church history. We think it's strange that Bob Jones is a one-off, but Bob Jones isn't. There was Catherine de Siena, Teresa of Avila, Jean Goyon. That, you know, we've got all of these mystics throughout history, Francis Xavier and all these other people, Cuthbert, Columba, P- Kieran, Patrick, David of Wales. We've got this amazing tapestry of history, the Jansenites, the Quakers, the Wesley- Wesleyans, and all of these other people that would have ascensions, go up up into heaven. But now the Lord's saying, come on up. Come on up because it's time to govern. It's time for the handover of the earth. It's time for the world to change in a way that it has never changed before. And we're in phase one of that, which is, I call it the Enoch mandate. Which is this, that we are to go up into Zion. We're to learn to go through the door. We're to learn, learn to ascend into heaven and to walk with saints and angels. Because listen, where we're going next involves the, the ecclesia in heaven. Remember, it says, God having prepared something better for us, that they are not complete apart from us. What does that mean? Apart means that together we're going to fulfill this. In fact, Rick Joyner's written about it in The Harvest. He said, uh, saints will start appearing in meetings. We'll appear there. They will appear here. Jesus himself will start appearing. Whoa. Wow. And there have been prototypes in history like Francis Metcalf and the Ladies of Gold. How many of you guys have read that book by James Maloney, The Ladies of Gold? I want to be a golden lady. There's now no male or female in the new creation. The Ladies of Gold, Francis Metcalf had powerful ministries, but the, the Lord said, will you, 40 of them, give up your international ministries, give it up to seek me. And for five hours a day, they would worship and they'd have a purple swirling cloud. And firelights would come down and form angels. And angels would converse with them. They'd have group transportations for days at a time. They'd actually have clothing out of heaven. They'd actually go into the spirit. And they're just a prototype of the ecclesia because the veil is, 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 is so thin now. That's why Hollywood is always talking about dimensions. Marvel movies are talking about layers of, 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 of planets and like Thor, there's these dimensions or realms. Good word, realm. 
You have the Matrix saying this isn't actually the real world. There's a world behind it. You have like Harry Potter and all of these things. There's like a huge, massive appetite for the supernatural because the, the, the middle ground on the supernatural has been removed. To be relevant in our days, we have to be revealed for what we really are because we've been lying We've been lying to the world when we said that we were the same. We're not the same. We are new creations. We're born from above. We're not even Welsh or English or American. In fact, we cannot locate our identity on earth because earth is going to pass away. And how's that going to work out for you in the future? You can't say I'm from Texas or I'm from Cardiff when Cardiff doesn't exist. That's another thing I learned in heaven. You know, when you go to heaven, they, they find it amusing what we're like because a lot of the old nations that they belong to don't exist anymore. It has no relevance. Enoch's country doesn't exist. The old saints' nations don't exist. They are fully identified in the new creation. They are fully identified in the blueprint of their authentic design, which is Christ, and they are the revealing of him. He is their country. That's challenging for us who've tethered ourselves to the soul-ruled realm and defined ourselves. We define ourselves by our birthdays and our age and by solar calendars when they're just powers and it says we're above all those powers. How can the sun or the moon define Jesus? How can seasons define Jesus? Then why are they defining you? See, when I look at the saints, they didn't wait until it was 2018 or 19 and look on the Elijah list to see what they were allowed to have. Columba and Cuthbert did not get an email waiting to tell them that they could walk with angels. They believed the gospel that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation and the old is gone. And they operated in a realm of government that shaped Britain. There would be no UK today if it wasn't for them. Because when the Anglo-Saxons and the Picts and the Scottish and the Welsh and everybody else were fighting, <laughs> these radical monks began to change the DNA of the land. That is the blueprint for now. That is the blueprint for a new united kingdom. Wow. 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 So he put eternity in your heart. One translation says he put space in your heart. Where does Jesus actually say heaven is anyway? Within you. So it's not far away. (laughs) (laughs) see he put eternity in your heart and he called you everlasting doors so how old are you see we keep identifying ourselves according to the flesh and Paul said when he saw Jesus as a glowing ball of light he said I used to think him as a mere man no more this way I used to think of you as a mere man But he said, that's when he said, I used to see through that lens, but now the lens has changed and I can no longer. Henceforward, he said, I cannot see them in a merely human fashion. That's why my book's called Beyond Human, because we are beyond the normal human. We are more than the normal human condition. We are not Adamic. Whoa. Are you guys all right? Thank you, Father. Whew. Oh. What am I trying to say in a very uneloquent way? Is that the greatest adventure is right next to your face. Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is at hand, and that literally meant as close as your hand is to your face. That's where all the realm of heaven is. All of it is that close. The only distance is in your mind. Wow. So listen to this. Jesus wants to activate this technology in this generation because he's always had a desire that they would be with him where he is. How can we continue with the prophetic as it's been? We can't remain in the knowing part. We can't remain in the imperfect. When I grew up, Paul said, I put aside childish things. 
What am I saying? I'm saying that there's a realm of union called love being in him and him in you that transcends the imperfect. Oh, wow. It transcends death and it transcends your record of sin. There you are innocent. There you are light. There you can get infused knowledge. In a moment of time, in the time that it takes to drink a cup of tea, you can spend six months there. That's what happened to Roland Buck, who wrote the famous book, Angels on Assignment. He was praying for the church meeting late at night, the night before. He was leaning on his desk, and he heard a voice say, come up here. He went up into Zion, into heaven, and he was there for, he thought, six or seven months. And he said heaven was carefree. He got shown the books of destiny. He got infused knowledge on scriptures, so he knew thousands of scriptures by memory. He knew 120 world events. He started to come back out of the spirit, back into his body, and he remembers seeing the back of his head and thinking, I'm really going quite gray. He got into his body, and he had a scroll still in his hand with 120 prophecies on, in his hand physically, and he wrote a book on it called Angels of Assignment, and he was only gone for 10 minutes. We are in a time of rapid change. I, someone, I asked this rabbi about Enoch, and they said, I haven't got time to be like Enoch. I've got a family, and I've got, I've got all of these concerns. And, and he patted me on the back and thought that was great advice. I thought that was the worst advice ever, because in the time he's having his biscuit, I've gone. <laughs> in fact, I didn't even finish listening to his mouth. It was like, wow, 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 poo. Because I am learning, and this is amazing, that you can be there and here at exactly the same time. Jesus is the template for it. In John 3, when he was talking to Nicodemus, he was so excited. It's like, hey, this really cool guy, Nicodemus, is coming. We can really have an amazing conversation. So he starts real easy, real simple. I'll tell you what he says. He says this, you've got to be born again. And he's like, I can't get it. He says, listen, you're not listening. Let me see it again. Unless a person submits to this original creation, the wind hovering over the water, the invisible moving the visible, a baptism into a new life, it's not possible to enter God's kingdom. What was he saying? You have to be of energy wave patterns. Winds, waters, waters, the the glory of the Lord is coming as waters cover the seas. What a water. Water is frequency energy, and vibration. Water covering the seas. That he was saying, this was, this was Jesus' Listen, listen. This was Jesus' introduction teaching. Being born from above. Yet we teach, it is being born again is, is the aim is to go to heaven when you die. And what have we done then? We've said heaven is qualified by death. We're saying death is the door, and we're saying death is your hero. And we create a powerless culture that doesn't believe they can walk with angels. I'll give you an example. You know, you were asking me earlier about is it for everyone? You know, some people throw that question out. Anyone that you ask that to, you say, well, when you die, do you think you'll see angels? They'll go, yeah, of course. When I die, I'll see the saints. The Bible says you have died. It says you were co-crucified and buried with Christ. You, he, you were planted into his tomb. You've gone through death. It says one died for all, therefore all died in him. So if you have to have a funeral, just go to Israel and have a look at your grave because that's where it is because you were co-buried with him. And now you're raised in newness of life. Now death owes you nothing. In fact, Elijah skipped death. Enoch skipped death. And many, many saints have skipped death. And there are people on earth today that are called ever living ones. I tell you a mystery. Not all of you will sleep. Throughout history, there have always been those that didn't die. Because when a promise is in the word, it becomes potential in every generation. And Paul said, I tell you a mystery, a mystical secret, mysterion, not all of you will die. 
That meant there was a capacity to skip death throughout history. Amen. <laughs> I, I kind of think this is like a happy message. I, am, I, am I getting it wrong? I, it's kind of like a good news message. It's kind of like making it bigger for you. You know, if you're struggling with it, it's because of fear. It's actually fear. Fear of deception, fear of dying, fear of the unknown. Perfect love casts out fear. If you gaze at his goodness, you'll realize those are just illusions in your mind, blocking your gateway from accessing the goodies. Oh. This is what he continues. So he says about being born again, born from above. This is the amazing thing. Oh, you've got to get this. You have to get this. this. I've been in the scripture for so long. Is this, that Jesus was burning with a desire for intimacy with Nicodemus. He's burning with a desire for intimacy with you. And it says this, you can't understand being born again. Oh, Nicodemus, I really wanted to talk to you about heavenly things. So born a bit frequency, vibration, and energy is an earthly. Did you hear that? The things that we're struggling with right now, being born from above, being of energy, being of light, children of light, being frequency and vibration, according to Jesus, is an earthly thing. There are truths beyond that, that he is waiting for people to join the conversation with in this generation, that he is saying, who wants to hear what I was going to talk about with Nicodemus? Heavenly, cosmic things. Where the Bible says heavenly, it means the cosmos as well. The word heaven, if you look it up in your Bible, includes the stars. There's a lot of cosmos. You're a co-heir of it all. Or do you think that the Father's business is limited to earth? If you want a good quote from this, I'll quote Rick Joyner because he writes about it in The Final Quest. He says that when he saw the saints in heaven, he saw some of them ruling over star systems, planets, and galaxies. Don't you want to find out what's going on? Untethered from the cares and worries of this world that choke the seed of his DNA in you, Jacob's ladder gets choked by cares and tethering to the world. But as you lift your eyes to the heavens and you engage his presence, it opens. It goes. Wow. Thank you, Father. So he wants you to understand that he is the door. John 10 verse 9, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. Do you know that Jesus defines being born again so differently to the church? I've got a theory. It's a really cool theory that we we should follow Jesus. It's it's, it's It's just a theory I'm building in my life. That actually, Jesus is my rabbi. Jesus' definition of being born again is if you believe, he is the door, you can go in and out. So his definition of being born again is that you can go into heaven. Not my definition. Jesus himself definition is that you can go in if you believe. Whew. See, we've repented enough to get saved, but not enough to see the kingdom. Wow. (laughs) It's changing. This is good news. I know it doesn't feel like it, but it is actually. It's actually really good news that you are being called up in desire and that many will say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. You're about to have adventures that the prophets of old didn't even have. I've seen stuff in space and time 
and the miracles we've seen with time and space. I've drank Enoch's wine, the glory of the testimony of his life. I've had expanded states. I've been shown technologies from the future. I've understood timelines. I've understood share prices. I've understood the financial crash, uh, Brexit. The Lord said about Brexit years, years and years ago, John Paul Jackson's, that that was going to be cut. And if you're saying why, go in the spirit and ask him, and then you'll have no choice but to see it from his viewpoint. Because he has not set up a Babylonian system in our generation. He has not. It's not been born. Remember that even the, the parliament building is modeled after Babel. There will be a united Europe, but his way, through the ecclesia, and it's going to be amazing. Oh, and you are powerful to disagree with me, but all I would say is, have you been and looked? (laughs) See, because the truth is that religion blocks us from going in. This is what Jesus said in Matthew 23, 13. It says that religion, you stand before a crowd and lock the door of the kingdom of heaven right in front of everyone. You won't enter the kingdom yourself and you prevent others from doing so. Does that sound familiar? When people say, oh, you can't be mystical. Did you know the mystical is a biblical word? And the prophets throughout history were called mystics, that we own mysticism. The word mysterion, where we get the English word mystic, is used 27 times in the New Testament. 27 times. We are the mystical body. Christ is the mystic secret of God. Marriage is mystical. He says this, I tell you a mystical secret. The husband and wife get married and become one. They become entangled on a quantum level, he says, this is a profound mystery, but I tell you what, I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about Christ and the church. See, we're living as if we're not entangled into Jesus. We have now got his name. Leave the house of your father and mother. Leave the house of your genetics. That's what Enoch did. Leave the land that you're from. Leave your father's house and come under a new name, a new land, and a new house. <sighs> I love that, that we, we've got his name. I'm married. I used to be married to sin and death, Romans says. Then I died so I could be free to marry Christ. Oh. Oh. So we've stood in the gateway and we blocked and we've said that we can't be mystical. But has anybody ever picked up a a dictionary and looked at what that means? I will tell you what it means. It means this. It's very simple. It means one, a person that believes they can see the unseen world. Do you believe you can see the unseen world? Second definition, it means that they can encounter God as a being through personal experience. Do you believe that you can know God through personal experience? The third definition is that you can know things that do not come through normal human knowledge. Do you believe that you can know the revelatory realms of heaven? Then you're a mystic. You are a mystic. In fact, it's quite funny because I've seen pastors in my city, they, wouldn't, they didn't want to advertise one of our events because it had the word mystic on it. And you know, but the same group of people are speaking in tongues. What does Paul, let's be biblical, what does Paul say tongues is? Mystical secrets spoken from your spirit. So with their minds, they're saying we're not mystical And then they're going, shikara baba shok baba baba. And they're actually contradicting themselves in the same meeting because to speak in tongues is to be mystical. Whoa. Whoa. (laughs) 
So it's there for the taking. I've got two more definitions of mystic that I've made up. I've made stuff up. I'm going to make stuff up. (laughs) One of my definitions, my made-up definitions in my dictionary is this. a A mystic is someone that enjoys the beauty of mystery. That they don't have to have black and white immediate answers. You know, how amazing is mystery? I love mystery. This, like, my wife is a continual mystery. <laughs> I'm not looking to get the simple answers. It's like an ocean to explore. So a mystic is someone that doesn't have to have the answer there and then. They enjoy the wonder of it. See, we've got to enjoy the wonder of it. We shouldn't just go up to heaven and say, I know how it all works. Let's go be amazed. Have you ever looked at the word ascend in Hebrew? It's made up of three letters, but the letters mean this. An eye, a shepherd's hook, and get disturbed with aura wonder. So it's an I-N, an Alemed, and a hey. And it basically means this. Look up to be taught by the shepherd's rod to be disturbed with awe and wonder. That is the Hebrew word for ascend. I want to propose to you, we've got to start to allow people to have encounters that we haven't got a grid for. Because listen, the world isn't afraid of inventing new terms. You've got Google, you've got iPads, you've got Twitter, you've got texting and all this other stuff. They're making new vocabulary. And we're saying that the spirit world's smaller than the natural. No, the spirit world's bigger and we need to start making up new words and new vocabulary. Because there's stuff there that's coming down on earth. I'll give you an example. The Lord spoke to me recently. He said, son, you know when I created the world, I only put a fraction of the unseen on it. People are praying, let it be on earth as it is in heaven. That means I've got to release more things on earth than have been here before. So I was like, oh, I would like a, a, a scripture for that, Lord. And he said, that's easy. He said, Noah, when he had the rainbow, that was the first time they saw it in the earth realm, but it had always existed around me. There are things called what no eye has seen and no ear has heard that it says the Holy Spirit is prepared for those who love him. He has actually stored up crazy days for this generation. And there is no one here that's going to get it through their intellect. In fact, the natural mind cannot receive the things of the Spirit. Your brain is too small for God. How many of you guys know John G. Lake? Right. In Spokane, he moved in such miracles, it became the healthiest city in the Western world. Over 100,000 verified miracles in one city. They would have x-ray machines showing the, the healings. They would have healing rooms all over the country. I mean, when he went to Africa, he said, I saw things I couldn't even tell the church. So, but he said this interesting thing. He said, other people see the healing. I have been shown the science of healing. So he said this, they would see the miracle, but I would see the mechanism by which it took place. Now I love that. I love John G. Lake. I love the saints. So I I was moved in my heart and I proposed this to the Lord. I said, Lord, John G. Lake understood the science of healing. I want to understand the science of the unseen. And I postured my heart in desire. And then it all changed in 2010. I've been involved in prophetic ministry for like 10 years. But in 2010, on an airplane going to France, the Lord came on the plane and sat next to me. In a vision, in a trance, the Holy Spirit came as a young Jewish man and sat next to me and began to talk to me. Because he's a person. He's real. And he began to speak to me about the mysteries of heaven. And after this had gone on for a while, and I felt it was shifting, he said this amazing thing. He said, would you like to go to heaven? I knew that this was like a tremendous honor because I was in the worst time of my life at the time. I'd lost my friend. Our ministry had crashed and burned. We were marred in controversy. I was crying, but I'd realized that you can fall upwards. Don't resist the hole, fall, and fly. What do I mean by that is often the moment that's the catalyst for change in your life looks like the complete opposite. And I had lost everything, but I knew there was only one option to get through it, which is to be strengthened in the Lord. 
See, David, when he lost all of his friends because their family got kidnapped and they were going to kill David, it says this interesting thing. He strengthened himself in the Lord. Do you know the word in means he was in another dimension? Do you know praying in the name means you sit in the yod hey vav hey? You sit in him and function in the name. So David strengthened himself in the Lord, and I knew I'd lost all my friends, but I knew that the Lord himself could be my greatest encourager, because I've been reading Rick Joyner for years, and I loved Rick Joyner, and Rick Joyner taught this. He said, true spiritual authority will be in you to the degree that the Lord himself is your encourager. See, there has to be a company that aren't encouraged by their pastor or by the the latest prophetic word, but they're encouraged in him. They are strengthened in him. They have They have a perpetual energy machine called being in the name. They strengthen themselves in the Lord. Wow! Hang on. Sorry, I'm, I wasn't going to try and power up. I'm just powering up because I'm... See, what the eye hooks into multiplies. It's the law of desire and focus. Because I'm focusing on it. I'm engaging that reality because I've been there. I live from there. Oh. See, we haven't even learned to live in him. In him we live. In. That's why many people haven't transported or teleported. Because you have to live in him to move in him. And to be transfigured, you have to... Be in him, live in him, and then a new being comes. In him we live and move and have our being. Wow. Oh, are you an innie or an outie? Are you an innie or an outie? Are you in him or out? Because if you are in, then there are consequences to your inclusion in Christ. One translation of Colossians 3 says this. Pursue with diligence the consequences of your co-inclusion in Christ. That's the mirror translation of Colossians 3 verse 1. Pursue with diligence the consequences of your co-inclusion in Christ. And then it says relocate yourself mentally. See, there are consequences. If you believe the gospel is more than you just being saved, but it's you being joined to the divine being, then there are consequences for you. If you believe that you not only went into the tomb, but you were raised up, then you've got to go up. Wow. And death owes you nothing. Do you know it says of Enoch? I love Enoch. Absolutely he changed my life. 2010, I was saying the story of the plane. That's when the Lord introduced me to Enoch. In one second, with no sense of going anywhere, I was in a place full of light. And this beautiful man stepped forward who looked like John Paul Jackson. A little bit like John Paul Jackson. In fact, I ended up meeting John Paul Jackson because of this encounter. And the Lord opened up all these doors through John Paul Jackson because when he met me, he knew Me and the Spirit through this experience. So it was powerful. He looked like John Paul Jackson, but he had these emerald eyes and like they looked like aqua seas. They were like beautiful tropical seas. And he had this lovely smile. He had a trim beard, kind of grayish white hair, but he looked so lovely and he had a crown. And I thought, this must be King David. That was my thought. But I was too stunned to say a word. You know when you're completely shocked? I was like paralyzed. I was like, my friend calls that catching flies. So I was catching flies in heaven, (laughs) and he said, and it was such a beautiful, beautiful man, he said, my name's Enoch, and he said, I want to show you something, and he moved like this, and the light went back, and I saw a vast place with tables that were like this, but flat, made of stone, and on them were all these books, and there was people looking, and angels, and he said this amazing thing, he said, these are the future acts of mankind And from the beginning, I understood them fully. Do you know what scared the life out of me? When I went and got the Ethiopic book of Enoch, the one that's quoted in Jude, the one that was in Dead Sea Scrolls, he actually says that in there. It's in there. It terrified me when I read it because I was like, this stuff is so real. And anyway, he said this. From the very beginning, he saw our day. You've got to get this. This is huge. This is huge. He saw us and was given such an expanded knowledge that he actually, I know this is crazy, but this is the truth. He actually 
knows each one of you (laughs) and what was written in those books. And he said this, I want to give you the testimony of the glory in my life. And he took this wine and he gave it to me and I drank it. And this is phenomenal. On the airplane, I could taste oaky wine in my mouth. I became aware of the plane again. I felt it going through my body. But when I tasted oak, I went into an expanded state where I saw Isaiah's scroll. And it was this, that there will be oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. They will rebuild the ruined cities. They will be repairers of the breach. They will repair the desolation of generations. And I went into a hyper-expanded state that lasted for the next year. That when I would pray, I'd go back into the expanse. And I saw the earth is going through the biggest change it's ever gone through. And we are moving from just being born again into an ecclesia that's going to reconstitute creation, Rebuild the ancient past, the ancient ruins, and this, the desolation of generations is the DNA. It's the trauma in the genome, and the record of death is going to be taken out of the human genome. The desolation of generations is the record of trauma that we carry in the tent that we've been given from our parents. And he's going to start to quicken our mortal bodies. I saw that Enoch as a pattern of number seven meant the end, the rest. That there's a company that will walk like Enoch. That what Enoch did was a prototype of a future generation. And that we are now in that time. And I know that through face to face. I'm, that which I know, that which I'm speaking, you're powerful to disagree with. But I'm telling you, face to face with Enoch, these things were revealed. And since that moment I drank that wine, all my relationships changed. The first people that invited me in immediately after this encounter were a a, a group that were rebuilding part of Bristol. They were actually rebuilding part of the city. The very first group that invited me in. Then I started to get invited into technology places because they would listen to my teachings and I would be teaching. Listen, this is how powerful it is. In that short half an hour on that airplane, I got infused knowledge and I would be teaching a tiny group of people and I would be saying things that I'd never learned. It was infused into me and God said, put these on podcasts And I said, Lord, no one's going to want to listen. Our ministry's died. There's only a room of a tiny room now. I used to cry for days before teaching every week. I thought it was over. He said, no, I'll tell you a secret. Release and you will increase. If you speak it, I will give you more. I will show you the power of a creative life. So I began to give away my teachings and they spread virally. We've now had like 1.7 million downloads off our website. 1.7, downloaded by universities, downloaded by people in Hollywood. I've just recently been in Hollywood with a senior director, producer of one of the biggest shows in Hollywood, inviting me to his house. I've been to see the most advanced computer that's been developed because the people who are designing this light technology computer are listening to the podcasts. See, going up into heaven isn't foolishness. See, going up into heaven isn't just a joke. Going up into heaven isn't just so you can have some cool stories. This is where your life is. Your life is hidden in Christ above. And now it's time that we start living from the above. Because we have to set our mind on things above. What does that mean? It means you are powerful to choose where you look. We do not focus on what is seen, for what is seen is temporary, but we focus on what is unseen because it's eternal. What does that mean? It means you can see the unseen. Otherwise, that verse is completely unfair. So, set your mind on things above. Because this is, I'll tell you what's happened in the last 10 years while this has been going on. I have seen that more and more people are going up. I was recently caught up to the Council of Nations, and the whole thing was buzzing. I mean, it looked like the Council of War. Do you know the biggest change in humanity is kicking off right now? There will never be a generation with the level of change in terms of technology. Do you know that one of the signs of heaven coming down is technology advancement? Do you know Satan resisted technology? That's why after the fall, as those generations died, technology went backwards, because he did not want us to access God's goodness that's manifested in technology. What do I mean by that? Is it a good thing that you have a hot shower? 
Is it a good thing that someone designed the technology of that chair? Technology is a manifestation of his goodness. Do you know the, the Lord has told me and he's shown me blueprints for technology for the last six years that we are in the dark ages of technology right now? We are about to see a surge in technology where it will look like magic. Do you know we're not even going to be earthbound? Do you know all the creation's waiting for you to manifest? Let me propose a question to you. If a rocket ship's going to take you to manifest there, you're going to be on it a long time. <laughs> What do I mean is that the gateway in technology in you is going to open up that he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Think about that. It doesn't say he who is joined to the Lord is two spirits. If you are joined to the Lord and you're one spirit with him, it means you have a capacity to be wherever his spirit is. Now, where is his spirit? Everywhere. Everywhere. And that's what Enoch discovered back at the beginning. And that is what we are about to rediscover. Amen. Amen. So we're going to do a very simple activation to end tonight. It's an activation that's so childlike. But let, let me just finish with this about verses on being childlike to see heaven. Is that Jesus likened heaven to a kid running up to his lap. He said, that heaven's like this. Heaven's made of this. Little kids that think nothing about protocol. They think nothing. They're innocent, and they see the good teacher. And they think, all I want is to climb on his lap. And Jesus said, unless you become like a child, you cannot see. The key to being mature in the spirit is being a child. So we're going to do a childish activation right now that if you put into practice in your lifestyle, you are going to have some crazy adventures. It's been tried and tested by thousands of people all over the world. We've done conferences of hundreds in nations all over the world, four, five hundred, eight hundred people, and taught them this, and this works. What we're going to do is we are going to step through the door because the scripture says, if you believe, it will be done for you. According to your faith, let it be done for you. Now, do we believe that he's a door? Then it's time to let our bodies in on the fun. Because the church, this is another thing that's going on now, and this is connected to Enoch, is that we've allowed our spirits to ascend in worship. So we've said our spirits can behold heaven. Then we said we'll think about heaven, but we've not allowed our bodies to experience heaven. The Enoch mandate is the complete redemption of the human body. He is a template of God sanctifying you, body, soul, and spirit. He is a template of immortality and life, which means this. Your body is about to have the best time of its life. Your body is about to get some mojo put back into it. Your body is about to be renewed. Watch and see. We will see the longest people that have ever lived. It's going to get every decade, they'll say a new record's been broken, but the church and the ascension community will be set in the precedent for it. You will be forerunners of life technology, ascension technology. So you guys ready for this? I want you to all find some space, if you can, where you can take a step forward. So just stand up. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Oh, yay. We're going to do a little practice now. We're not going to go in yet. I just want you to practice stepping forward. So let's step forwards. Feels good, right? Just feel it. Step back. Okay. Are you ready? Do you know that faith pleases God? Do you know that honoring something means that life comes to you from that thing? If we honor the fact he's a door, even if you see nothing right now, you give it permission to function in your life because what has weight in your heart has expression in the earth. What has, in other words, what has value to you has permission to exist. So we put a value on going into heaven. 
So, Father, I thank you. We honor your presence. I just want you to become conscious that you're in him, that you're surrounded by him. Become aware of his presence now. Just enjoy him. Delight yourself in the Lord a second. Yummy, yummy. Now, by faith, Lord, we say you are the door. You are the door that if we believe, we can go in. By faith, now we step forwards. Take a step in. Step back out again. Okay? Oh. Oh. Wow. Just feel it again. His presence should be getting stronger if you're engaged in his presence. Lord, I thank you. The door is open and I have free access. Now we're going to step into Zion with the saints and angels, okay? It says, you have come to Mount Zion. Not will come. You have come. Are you ready to go to Zion? By faith, we step into Zion. You don't have to see anything, but I want you to begin to feel Zion. Feel the cloud of witnesses that are here and the angelic canopy. Maybe some of you will feel light or colors. You might, you might engage fragrances or something. Just wave your hand in it. Feel it. Taste it. Drink it. Now just have a look around by faith. Jesus is there. The saints made perfect. The city, the Jewish. This is what it says in Hebrews. You have come to Mount Zion. You have come to the new Jerusalem. You have come to the angels in joyful assembly. You have come to the church of the firstborn who were already perfect. You've come to the ecclesia of God, to Jesus, the righteous one, to the judge of all, the father, and the blood that speaks your innocence. The blood welcomes you and speaks that you are innocent, clean, and accepted in the beloved. You are home. Now rest, rest, enter into his rest. And now let's just step back into the room. Wow. Thank you, Father. And that's what the courtroom of heaven's like. You just step into the courtroom to get justice and you bring your legal paperwork back. It's better than warfare. It says that the leaves of the trees are for the healing of the nations. Do you know you are blessed? in heavenly places, then why don't you explore it? Father, I thank you tonight that there is an Enoch generation. And I ask right now that you would commission everyone here to walk in the ancient paths, to plunge into the mysteries, and to drink the wine of your glory. That everyone here would begin to spend entire nights caught up in the spirit. That everyone here would walk with angels and understand them because you walk with angels and you understand them and you're the pattern and blueprint of our design. Lord, I ask everyone here would become aware, even right now, that we're encumbered and surrounded by the cloud of witnesses. That there is no separation. There's only one body in heaven and on earth. And we cannot separate what God has joined together. We cannot say to the arm, we don't need you. For what's coming next on the earth, mark my words, we will become one body. And we're, there will never be a time like this. You will be in amazement and wonder every day, wondering what the Lord is going to do. You are in an age of wonders. Thank you, Father.